Welcome to this short video with a worked example using liquid liquid extraction. This is our problem statement. Uh, we have a feed of 1000 kilograms per hour of a nicotine water solution that has uh, one weight percent nicotine. It's to be extracted with kerosene in a countercurrent arrangement that is uh, done at 20 degrees Celsius and it should reduce the nicotine content to 0.1 weight percent. So from 1 weight percent to 0.1 weight percent. And we are asked to determine the minimum kerosene rate, the minimum solvent flow rate, and secondly, the number of theoretical stages that would be required if the solvent flow rate was 1,150 kilograms per hour. We are given this equilibrium data, which uh, shows us in mass ratio format. So here we have the mass ratio in the aqueous phase, how many kilograms of nicotine per kilogram of water, and here we have the uh, equilibrium mass ratio in the organic phase. So, uh, some very quick assumptions. We are going to assume that it's a, a dilute system. We're going to use a straight operating line on our equilibrium diagram, and we are going to assume that water and kerosene are completely immiscible. The uh, solution, part A, is to calculate the minimum solvent flow rate. So this is very easily done graphically, uh, and we can think of it as the flow rate in a system where there is an infinite number of theoretical stages. So as you increase the number of theoretical stages in these separations, you decrease the uh, solvent flow rate. So if you increase the number of stages to uh, some infinite maximum that would correspond to the minimum solvent flow rate and we will do that graphically. So firstly to get our data in order our feed flow rate we're given is a feed of 1000 kilograms per hour. The uh, mass fraction of nicotine in that feed is 0.01 so we're going to denote the feed uh, in the aqueous phase as x0. Uh, our heavy phase flow rate then is denoted by H uh, and that's equal to a thousand multiplied by one minus that so the flow rate of just water is 990 kilograms per hour. Our fresh solvent which is pure kerosene has a solute concentration of zero and we are told that the final concentration of nicotine in the aqueous phase or the heavy phase should be 0.1%, so that corresponds to Xn equals 0.001. The uh, equilibrium data that we're given is in mass ratio, uh, not in mass fraction or mass percent. So we are going to convert these concentrations uh, to mass ratios so that we can do our working in mass ratios. So that's what these calculations do here. So, first step, we need to plot our equilibrium data. So if you're using graph paper, you need to map off these x, y pairs uh, and construct a smooth line through them. Uh, I haven't used the last data point, it's off the edge of the graph here, but we don't need that region for our working here. And note that this, this is not a straight equilibrium line, so this is a, somewhat of a, a smooth line through those points. Our next step in finding the minimum solvent flow rate is to identify one end of the operating line. So we know both uh, the x and y coordinates of this point here. The x coordinate is the final concentration of nicotine in the aqueous phase, and the y coordinate is our fresh solvent feed. It's pure kerosene, so it's zero. So we know that point and we can place it there. Then uh, we just draw our operating line going to a pinch condition at the other end here. So we know that this was our feed, our aqueous phase feed, 0 0.0101. And so we just go up there, uh, construct that operating line to have its pinch point here, and then just read that off on the y-axis here, uh, which gives us the highest concentration of nicotine that we could have in the solvent if we had the minimum solvent flow rate and an infinite number of theoretical stages. 
So we can use that number. So now we know both ends of our operating line and we can plug that into this equation to get the slope of the operating line. And because we already knew the heavy flow rate, then we can rearrange that equation to solve for the light phase or the organic phase flow rate. And that comes out at 969 kilograms of kerosene per hour. So if you're writing up the solution to a problem like this, it's nice to just write that out in words and make it very clear that you've answered the question. The minimum required solvent flow rate is 969 kilograms of kerosene per hour. Moving on to part B, we are asked to calculate the number of theoretical stages required with a kerosene flow rate of 1,150 kilograms per hour. So note that this is larger than 969. Uh, so we have a larger solvent flow rate now. If this number was smaller than our minimum solvent flow rate, it would probably indicate that we'd made a mistake calculating the minimum because you cannot use a solvent flow rate lower than that minimum and still achieve that final specification uh, for the final uh, concentration in the aqueous phase of 0.01%. This part of the problem is very straightforward because we can straight up calculate the gradient of the operating line. So uh, H over L is 0.86 and we can pl plug that in here to our equation for the operating line and from these four quantities here we know three of them so we know the feed and final concentration in the aqueous phase we know the fresh solvent feed has a concentration of the solute of zero because it's pure kerosene so we can rearrange that equation to solve for y1 uh, which is the final concentration of nicotine in the organic phase and it's 0.00782. That also makes sense because uh, this is lower than the concentration that we calculated when we used the minimum solvent flow rate. So you would expect using more solvent uh, that the final concentration would be lower or it would be more dilute. Let's solve this graphically again. So here we are with our equilibrium data plotted and that's the exact same point as before. So our final aqueous phase concentration is still the same and our solvent feed is still the same. So this point hasn't moved, but we have a new point at this end of the operating line. So our feed concentration hasn't changed, but now instead of having the maximum solute concentration in the organic phase, we've got a lower concentration, which we calculated on the previous slide. And with those two ends of the operating line, we can uh, actually draw in our operating line and note that there's now no pinch condition. So we can calculate a finite number of equilibrium stages, theoretical equilibrium stages. And we can start at either end of our operating line. I'm going to start at the top and just step off and number the stages. So there's three stages done already, a fourth stage, Fifth and sixth stages are a little bit smaller because the operating line is getting close to that equilibrium line, which we remember is, is not a straight equilibrium line. With eight stages, we're almost there and uh, we would require a little bit more than eight stages. So to finish off the problem, we just write out our final solution in words. Then approximately 8.3 theoretical stages are required.